Hi everybody, welcome in, it's Andrew Stadel. This video is gonna show you how to use the first five days of Estimation 180 with your students. Stay tuned until the end of the video, I'm gonna show you where to get the handouts that you'll see me using in this video. Okay, so here we are on the homepage of Estimation 180. How do we get to day one? You'll notice at the top, there's days one through 20. You can click there and you'll find day one. Or you could scroll down a little bit and there's days one through 20 as well. And you could click there and you'll see day one waiting for you. So when you land on day one, you'll see it's asking about how tall is Mr. Stadel? That's me. Now, chances are good I have not met your students and they have not met me. And so that kind of puts this at maybe a guess, but we're gonna find out why we can turn this into an estimate because we are gonna still be strategic about the number or the height in this case that we choose for Mr. Stadel because there are some elements in the picture that we can pull out and use to be very strategic and purposeful with our estimate. As a reminder, anytime you go to a task, click on the image. This will enlarge the picture so that you and your students can look more closely at the elements in the math landscape. I'm gonna move over to my tablet so I can think aloud a little bit about what students might say or notice or question in some of these tasks for you. It's okay if they don't mention them, but I'm gonna point them out because I've heard them a lot from students and they might help you in your math conversations with students. So I've heard students point out that there is a fence in the background, and I think that's important. And so what do we know about the fence? Not much, but we know it's not like a really tall fence. So what I'm going to say is maybe that fence is about three to four feet. Now you'll notice on this estimation task, I have a lower limit, an upper limit, and an actual estimate, kind of like a Goldilocks thinking here, right? Too cold, too hot, just right. And so what we want to do here is encourage students to be brave with their lower limit and upper limit. For example, if a student said, well, we know he's not one inch tall, I'm going to put that as my lower limit. Are they right? Yes. But let's encourage them to be braver. If I'm guessing that the height of the fence is about three to four feet tall, then I'm going to put that as my lower limit because he's taller than that fence. In terms of an upper limit, he looks like he's a tall lad, kind of skinny, but he's not like crazy tall, like Shaquille O'Neal tall. So I would say he's not taller than seven feet. And I think that's good enough. He's somewhere in there. I'm going to just estimate today that he's about six feet tall. That's okay. Now, some things I've also seen students do is like say, well, what if there was someone like in our class standing next to him? Where would that person kind of be? And what's their height? You know, like maybe they're like, oh, whatever. And that might help. But again, we don't know much about Mr. Stadel at this point. So we're just going to kind of move on. Let's go find out how tall he is. So let's go back to the website, click off the picture, and then we see the reveal button here. Let's click on that and find out. I want you to take notice to the six foot four. It's represented as six feet with a prime and four inches with a double prime. If you're in the metric system, it's about 193 centimeters. Okay, now I'm gonna introduce you to the daily log. So let's go back to my tablet. You'll notice on the daily log, I have five days here, and this is great. I love the daily log because it allows you to see the connections between each day, and you might reference some information from previous days. So let's go through this daily log together. You'll notice Mr. Stadel's height is day one, and I put my lower limit of four feet, my upper limit of seven feet, and I came up with an estimate about six feet. Then I shared my reasoning. Well, I said he was taller than the fence, but not like Shaq tall. All right, and then I'm gonna write down the reveal once my teacher reveals six foot four, and hopefully we don't write the following. We don't write 6.4, and what a great teachable moment we can have with students to say 6.4 feet is not the same thing as six feet four inches. If you don't wanna tackle that on day one, don't worry about it. You can come back to it over the next five days. So now there's a couple ways you can approach this. It just depends on what you wanna do. If you wanna break these estimation tasks up, one day at a time, great. You can maybe have them fill it in as a warm up as they're walking in class, write down Mrs. Stadel's height and show the picture. Or if you just wanna save some time and have them write out the remaining four on their daily log and just say, hey, we're gonna come back to it when we have time, whether it's in the middle of class, as an exit ticket, as a warm up, whatever you decide, you have that flexibility. Let's go check out day two and see how we can reference information that we learned from day one. Okay, on day two, you'll notice we're asking about how tall is Mrs. Stadel. This is key here. We have information about Mr. Stadel that we can use with this estimate for Mrs. Stadel. And that's why it's not a guess. We're just not blindly guessing anymore. We're gonna use elements from the math landscape to help us with this. So let me point out a couple of things I've heard students reference. So number one, we know that Mr. Stadel is six foot four. And so what we could do is immediately go to our upper limit and say, well, she's not six foot four. And if we said, well, half of Mr. Stadel is about right there, we could say, well, our lower limit is probably whatever half of six foot four is, which is about three feet, two inches. And so she's somewhere in between those, right? Now, what I've noticed students do, number two, is students say, well, what is maybe that distance between the top of her head and the top of his head? And they say maybe one foot or so forth. 
So it would be reasonable for students to come up with estimates that say she's about five foot four inches. But here's a bonus thing I want you to consider that students often point out. They look at my posture and how I'm standing, and they'll notice that I'm not necessarily standing straight up. And they might take that into consideration when they're making their estimate. So let's go back to the website and see how tall is Mrs. Stadel. All right, so here we are. Let's click on the reveal. And there she is. She's five foot five, which is about 165 centimeters. Okay, let's return to our daily log and put that information there. Okay, in our daily log, our estimate was about five foot four. And we said that, okay, she's not as tall as Mr. Stadel, and she's taller than half. Okay, and we could write that reasoning right here, right? So we could say she was about a foot shorter than Mr. Stadel. Okay, and her actual estimate was five foot five. Now we're not gonna go through and do day three, four, and five in detail like I just did with day one and two. We've kind of established a foundation, which is great with day one and two. And now as we move through day three, four, and five, I'm gonna point out maybe one, maybe two things that you might hear students talking about and making connections to heights from Mr. Stadel and Mrs. Stadel, making connections to units of measurement, as well as some proportional thinking. On day three, we're asking about how tall is Mr. Stadel's son? So again, we already know my height. And they might say, students might say, well, he looks about half, maybe a little bit taller than half. I've also heard students point out the fact that there's these shutters in the background. And so they maybe take my height and kind of break it up and say, well, the shutter, each shutter length is about so many inches. And so then they take that into calculation for my son's height. Lots of fun things here you can do with this day three. In day four, I use this task with my high school geometry students when we're talking about similar triangles. I'm not saying you have to, but I'll point that out at the end as a bonus. So a lot of students will say, wow, here's Mr. Stadel. He's standing next to this lamppost. How many times can we stack Mr. Stadel, essentially, to find out the height of the lamppost? And so this is a great math conversation for students to have and juggling the idea of six foot four inches. And what are they going to do with that? Are they going to multiply it by three? Are they going to add it three times? And so here you have a great opportunity for students to say, oh, we have 12 inches and 18 feet. And that converts to 19 feet, right? Now, the quick bonus on this one is when students in my geometry class say, hey, what are some things we could measure? Well, we already know my height. You can measure that. We can measure my shadow. We can measure the lamppost shadow. And when we have that one, two, three, we have those three things that are measurable, we could use that to actually calculate the fourth thing, which is the height of the lamppost. That's so fun. I love that. And lastly, day five, you're going to estimate the height of my daughter. Similar to other days, we already know someone's height in this picture. We know our son's height and we know that she's shorter. And so they might just want to say, hey, okay, take the son's height and take about a foot off or whatever, how many ever inches they would like to on that one. Again, the purpose of this one though, is to really drive home the point of what's the upper limit, probably my son's height. And then for them to reasonably subtract a number of inches that makes sense to them. I hope you found this video helpful. Now I'm gonna point out where you can get those handouts and a couple bonus items that you might be interested in. So let's start with the handout that you saw me working on on the tablet where I could annotate and draw on the pictures. Those handouts can be found on every single day of one through five. For example, on day five, underneath the picture, there's an orange button that says, get the student handout for this task. And you'll notice I have all the days ready for you. There's four of the same day on one page so you could cut them out and give students the little sheet of paper and they could draw on them. If that's not your jam and you really like the daily log, the daily log has 10 days on it, which really allows you to make connections and use information from previous days. You'll find the daily log at the teacher resources page. So go up to the top, click on teacher resources, and then under student handouts, it's the first item, daily log 10 days. I hope this was enough to get you started on the first five days. If you're interested in more, then I've got two things for you. So number one, make sure you subscribe to my newsletter where I share blog posts and updates and resources that you might find helpful. Number two is I highly recommend you check out the free mini course on how to use Estimation 180. That's also found on the teacher resources page where you can sign up to take the free mini course. It has five essential tips to help you get started. It unpacks a few of the things that we've already talked about and even more. Thanks for being here. I hope you found this video helpful. Be sure to like and subscribe. Take care.